Welcome. This is the tutorial for master copy assignment. We're going to go over how to uh, begin this assignment and some of the parameters. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is select an image. There are a few requirements I have. The first one is that it be minimum of 1000 pixels either in the width or the height. Uh, make sure it's a landscape. No, there should not be a dominant figure uh, or in other words the most of the you can have little figures in the draw in the painting but it shouldn't be primarily a portrait or uh, a large part of the composition should not be uh, figures or creatures. It, sh it can be digital or analog, meaning it can be an oil painting, an old master, or it can be from a contemporary artist uh, who works digitally. The no photo bashing. Photo bashing often sounds like a naughty word, like it's a bad thing. It is a very good thing. It helps us paint faster, especially for live action. It can be good. Um, but the rule the thing is if you're trying to learn how to use brushes and you're copying somebody who has used photos in their painting you're never going to achieve or learn much that way so we want to study brushwork from other artists not uh, photo manipulation by other artists and the last thing is make sure it's approved by me email it to dustinmckay at gmail.com and I will let you know if it's uh, appropriate and I'm mostly making sure that you've selected a piece that isn't um, A, too complex, B, fits the needs of the assignment, and also doesn't uh, hit any other problems that you know maybe I haven't mentioned here. I've given you a few artists you can look at. Um, Ian McHugh, Simon Stallenhog, Rob Rupel, and James Gurney. All of them have a great amount of work online that you can look at and it's easy to find images that are uh, more than a thousand pixels. We need it large enough so that we can see the brushwork when we zoom in. Alright, so I have a Photoshop document, or I mean I have Photoshop open. I need to make a document. So I'm going to first go online and make sure I have my image. and I'm going to go ahead and right click and copy it. I'm doing that on my other monitor. And when I come in here, I'll say file, I'll go ahead and say file new, and it's coming from the clipboard, so it's actually giving me the exact dimensions of my document, and we see that it fits the size requirement of a thousand pixels in either either height or width. It does in both, so we're good. Uh, the color mode is RGB, and uh, other than that, our color profile. I have it on don't color profile, but we could go ahead and switch it into maybe 1998. And there we go. I'll go ahead and paste it now. That is edit paste. Uh, right there it is, control V. And there we go. We have a uh, painting by Simon Stallenhog. It's always great to go ahead and look up what you can about the artist. You'll usually find interviews or histories and you can learn a lot about their process. Um, Simon, I believe grew up in Sweden and lives there now and he lives in the countryside and his um, a lot of his paintings are the rural countryside mixed in with sci-fi elements and so here we have a pretty neat kind of barn house with uh, maybe some satellite dishes and things on top um, maybe not nearly as sci-fi as most of his work is but um, I thought it was a good one in terms of he he mentions he always is striving to have as natural a look as possible um, or analog when he's painting and so I think that's something I want to try and replicate. Um, to begin I'll just start by hitting the C for crop tool and I'll swing on over. I'm right handed so I'm just going to swing this out this way until the middle of my... Let me hide that for a second. Come on. Oh dear it doesn't want to go over enough. I'll just do it twice. All right, so crop it once. I'll just drag that out until the middle's about there. So I've doubled the size of the canvas. Let's take a look at my layers. I'll move that over here. 
And on the underside, I can go ahead and paint that middle gray. This is a black and white assignment, so you only need to paint this in grayscale. And the reason is I just want you to focus more on the brushwork and the value and not so much the hue. So to do that, you could just take layer one and do image adjustments and desaturate it. But this actually doesn't give you an accurate representation of the values. I don't do this one very often, so I seem to have lost it. Well, I can just go to hue saturation and just take it down. There we go. Um, a better way to do this is to go to the view proof setup and go to custom. And here I can set that proof to give me uh, right on there where is it? working gray dot gain 20%. So this is just actually give, showing me the conversion into that uh, device, the working gray. And this is a much a more accurate representation of value as opposed to just taking one and desaturating. Matter of fact, just to kind of show you, I'll duplicate and bring this one on over. And then I'll turn desaturate it using the you'll notice there's a slight shift there when I do that. The window gets darker. Um, some other areas get lighter. So just desaturating an image, and you can see in the icon it's desaturated, doesn't do it justice. So I like to use this view proof setup. And once you've set the proof setup to be the working gray, command control Y or command Y and then I have it right here, view right there. Uh, that turns on and off the proof. So it's, it's just a temporary filter that just turns on and off. And I can hit control Y for that. Great, so now that I have this, the first step would be to block in the painting. Uh, you could do this a number of ways. You could draw it. You could just block in shapes. Um, I think on this instance, I'll go ahead and um, draw. So let's go ahead and zoom out. Hit F once. That allows me to view this better. Let's find a good drawing pencil. Uh, make a new layer. So I'm on its own layer. Turn my global flow down. All right, there we go. So there's a little horizon line, some trees. I hold shift when I draw, it makes it straight. And that's a nice way to just get a straight line. I'm not overly concerned about your accuracy in copying the painting in terms of the shapes and the exact location. Um, do the best you can, get some practice, but in the end of the day, it's the values and the brushwork that's most important. Well, I think that's a pretty good blocking. I think I'll have uh, plenty of things planned out, ready to make some shapes. So let's use this drawing now to block in the major shapes and organize the painting properly. All right, so now that we have a drawing, let's go ahead and start blocking in our shapes. I'm going to go ahead and do a little housekeeping. Let's give this a name called drawing. For reference, let's make a new layer just on top, and this will become uh, the sky. So we're going to work back to front. Take my drawing, turn it down. There we go. So to do this, you might just grab a big rectangular selection for your sky. And I always like to give enough opacity to Daddy. really. Daddy. So with this selection made, I want to paint bucket that value. Whoops, look really bright there. <clears throat> that ensures I have full opacity, no semi-transparent. I want to go find my soft airbrush. Just do a little bit of a left to right gradient. I might even just turn that off momentarily so I can see what it is I'm doing. There we go. Let 
slow down a little bit there. Okay, so there we go. There's a subtle left to right. Turn the drawing back on and let's work our way forward. So I'm going to now do the tree line. So to start with this, uh, tree line, go here. Trees, BG trees, background, how about that? And I'm going to start with there we go, some shapes with the lasso tool. Kind of making some corrections as I go to my drawing. And then this can kind of come down here. It's just pretty approximate. Remember, I'm always going to have stuff going in front on layers that are higher. So I'll take the paint bucket tool and let's just put in a value. Let's go a little bit darker. And mm, yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe a little lighter to start. And just keep it there. All right, yeah, it's not going to have the shapes that we're really looking for, but I'm just kind of more curious and blocking in. Um, or more interested in just blocking in the main value in the general approximate shape and then we'll kind of refine and build up from there. So let's go ahead and do I'm going to do the GP which means the ground plane. Ground planes are kind of an interesting layer because they usually go from the middle ground background up to the foreground so they're going to be pretty low on the order of um, on the order or the hierarchy of layers. Oops, wrong tool. So this, looking out around, it'll be a slightly lighter value than the trees really. So I'll start with the tree value that'll come up. Uh, I'm gonna lock those pixels and as I come forward, I want to get a dark value and just sort of go darker as I get closer. Because you can notice just generally it goes light to dark, kind of creating a vignette. It also helps with the atmospheric perspective. There we go. Let's do another lasso tool to do the road. Oops. Sometimes with the lasso tool, I'll just go ahead and set the feathering to like in this case four pixels but just any amount that I think is going to give me uh, a good softness to begin with that way I don't start my painting with completely hard edges I have. holding shift will add to my selection here holding minus will subtract Gonna take out some of those areas. The shift will add. I'll break it up. All right. So new layer. Call this one road dirt road but it's a road nonetheless so you see there's some softness to that because of my selection once again I'm gonna lock the pixels take my airbrush and sort of refine these values I think it needs to be a little brighter a little higher come up here I think down here is actually about the right value good all right let's go ahead and put in the we can do the car or the house I'm excited to do the house so I'm gonna do the car first because that's usually I like to kind of get the things that I may be less excited with about out of the way. And then as a special treat, you get to do the thing. Almost like a reward system. You have to do little tricks like that sometimes to get yourself through you know, parts of your painting. Uh, 
The car's not that awful. <laughs> Poor car. Feels bad. I like your car. You're just not as fun as that house. Uh, so I'll go ahead and block that in. Let's turn off the uh, drawing. You'll see, wow, that's a little too bright for my car. So I'm going to use Command U or Control U, and that will give me this hue saturation. And I can just bring down the lightness until I feel like it's about right. I notice it's just a step. Generally speaking, it's a, this this side of the car is a step darker than the road, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm a step darker there. All right, and now let's go ahead and do some of the darker parts of the car. So we have sort of underneath and the tires. I'm gonna use the elliptical marquee. Just gonna paint some wheels. about it so take my brush take a much darker value and uh, lock the pixels so that it only paints those areas let's also go and do the window here do this one Just for the heck of it, let's add those little rear view or rear lights. Maybe a little, oops, a little shift. Maybe a little license plate. These all feel like about the same value. Let's go eyedropper. Okay, so there's our little value for that. Now the house. start with I'm not going to go all the way to the to the, save the silos that are behind it so one thing I'll do is I'll hold shift right and that gives me a perfectly vertical and I'm kind of curious actually let's just do a little study if these ones are perfectly straight they're not right because he's taking doing some third uh, three point perspective, which is going to put these at a slight uh, going up. So, what's nice about this though, is I can go up, and then so I know that's vertical, so I'll just go over that and I can go slightly in from there by letting go of shift. I think I've gone a little too high with my line. So, shift and a little bit in out for the window to here and now shift all the way up to there and then just go slightly in to get that third point perspective It's going to be, you know, I'm kind of squinting. I'm going to make it slightly darker than the trees, just so we get that sort of things are darker as we go back, uh, come forward, generally speaking, because of atmospheric perspective. So let's hide the drawing, and I'm going to go a little darker. So I'll command U, darken that up. I think I could probably go a little darker of these trees back here, too. Whoops. Grab that layer. Green view. Probably pretty good. All right. Turn off the feather for a second. <clears throat> so now I've got the the blocking the basic big part of the house. Let's break it down into some of the, the white trim. So we'll go ahead and start to find out where I'm going to put that trim. Let's 
So you could definitely be hand painting a lot of these shapes in. Um, I find that if I already have a drawing, I already have my plan for what I'm painting, then using something like tools like the lasso tool or the elliptical tool and shift and minus selecting, it's a much quicker, uh, more effective way of blocking in a, a large amount of paint than hand painting. <clears throat> This is a fully opaque uh, application of the paint, so I'm not getting any semi-transparency, which is most likely going to happen if you're just using a brush to draw it. I think that's the most of my trim all done. So let's go ahead and paint that in white. Which isn't really white, right? It's a, just a very high value. So I'm gonna grab, you know, it's about the same value as the sky. So I'm gonna grab that value. Instead of painting on that house layer, I wanna keep this separate. So I'm just gonna call this the trim. And I did what's called a clipping mask. So if I hold Alt and I click between two layers, You'll see now it has a little arrow pointing down. That means whatever I'm painting here on this layer has to follow or adhere to the pixels of the layer underneath. It's a little dark or a little light, so I'm gonna bring it down. I could have paint bucketed it. Um, let's hide the selection. Command H or just deselect Command D and turn off my drawing and let's evaluate from there. So when I do this, you can see, we turn off your drawing, it's much easier to evaluate the relationship of your values. And I go, yes, that white trim is much too bright. So I'll hit Command U, and we'll just bring it down. So it feels about right, and that feels much better. So now I can go in and start to, uh, like for example, I could come in just on top of this house. I'm gonna grab a, a round, maybe a flat round here. Smaller. Lock the pixels, grab it, and then I'm just gonna come a step value up. Do some vertical. I might even grab like this section I don't want to be painting on. I want to keep that dark. So we'll do that and then do a select inverse selection. So I have everything else selected. That way I can just kind of come down and paint. And so he's using the paint strokes as a way to replicate or give us simulate, I suppose, the wood barn paneling. So let me go smaller strokes and then some bigger ones. Let's see if I can't get that effect. Maybe rotate my brush, I can get that way. some variety, not all just vertical strokes. Right. And then I'm gonna come do uh, select inverse again. And I go, yeah, you know, he's pretty dark down there with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken up underneath. All right, let's go ahead and have a look. Good, so I'm already feeling much better about that. Um, that was painted right on the house layer, right? So this is all flat on a single layer. That's okay. Uh, the trim, I'm gonna probably keep separate for a little while, but there might come a point where I merge these two layers. 
Uh, but for now, I think I'm okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my house. Uh, let's do the roof line. And might start with a lasso tool. And just use these little scallop shapes. There, and then we'll kind of come across what this way. And now I'm gonna uh, inverse the selection. Once again, hotkey for that is Command Shift I. Uh, let's also minus select out the parts that are not roof lines. So that's from here to there. Don't want to be painting on those. Oops, that was too much. Good. So I'm gonna block in that value. A little bit lighter to start with. If I hit Command H, that should hide your extras in Photoshop. Hiding extras are things that you just like the selection. So my selection is still active. I just can't see those marching ants. So now I'm going to go a higher value and start to do some of the corrugated metal here. A slightly different size strokes. Some different ang uh, different directions at times. Maybe angle my brush a little bit. So I have my left hand on my bracket key, just to kind of do a couple of an occasional steps up and down in sizes. And now let's just go a little bit lighter. Command U and see if I can make that. Oops, don't can't do that. Make a couple of slightly lighter brushwork strokes. Sometimes I'll just take an airbrush too and just brush over the whole thing. And you bring up the value overall, right? So if I just grab that layer and I just go, wait, oops. Once again, I cannot make sure I do not have this area. Bandage, let's make sure I don't have this area selected. So I might have selected that right here. Bandage again. So there we go, just slightly over the over that brings up the values over everything. So I consider these areas pretty close to finish. Now you'll notice, let me just hide some stuff so you can see. There's some irregularities to the edges on the silhouettes of these shapes, something I haven't been able to really include yet. Uh, and I could go more fidelity on some of these smaller brush, brush strokes. Uh, I know this artist, uh, tries extra hard to make his paintings feel as natural as possible. And while my lasso tool got me there real quickly, it made things a little bit rigid. So I need to almost un uh, rigify. <laughs> so it's not so graphic as I have now. And to do that, I'm just gonna go to my house layer, right? I'm gonna unlock the pixels. I'm gonna grab a hard eraser. Turn it down pretty small. And let's just hit tab to hide everything. And let's start to erase out and look for places where I can. Um, looks like here he's kind of trying to get the unevenness of this corrugated metal. selection that was active. That happens when you hide a selection. Sometimes you forget you have it and then you're like, why is it not, not working? Um, we'll go ahead and get in some of these pieces in here. Get that unevenness. 
with a with a, some pressure pressure sensitivity on this hard round, I can actually erase a round of semi opacity or semi the flow is not a hundred percent. Right. And that's gonna start to give me a little bit of what he has here. If I look real closely, well if you get too close it gets kind of pixely, but I can see a softness. Some parts are harder, other parts are soft, and we'll um, to, uh, get that soft edge, I sort of find an eraser that's not 100%, can kind of, with some pressure sensitivity in it, can give me that softer, that softer natural paint edge. Okay, go over that just like this. You can see it's pretty prevalent on that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and drag. Not pressing uh, completely hard. All right. Little details like that will go a long way to make this feel like a real painting as opposed to a digital painting. Um, so I'm going to kind of, that's the thing I'm going to focus on as I move forward is, okay, I don't, I, I know my values. I want to make sure my values are right. I, I got my lock and my composition, but I really want to focus. I want you guys to focus on the brushwork. And if you need to, you know, make some different brushes down here, I definitely need a texture brush to get some of this, um, you know, almost like a canvas or a paper texture coming through. So I'm going to have to look at doing some texture brushes to get th that happening because that's not, never going to happen with a, a hard round brush like I have here. This guy. There's no way to get on that layer. Let's go to my road, unlock those pixels. I'm going to even start working back and forth a little bit, make my brush smaller. But as you can see, there's just no, um, texture coming through on those brushes. So if I come into my brush editor, right. And I start adding a texture, just click on texture and then I can start playing with different blending modes. So here we do this. Let's make the texture scale larger. May not be the right one, but let's just see what happens. Yeah, already feeling so much better. I'll try to turn up my flow a little bit, get some more opacity going. Maybe give myself an angled brush to give me some more interesting shapes, kind of fit into those more angular. Like I was painting with a flat brush, I find sort of a nice natural look you see you did sort of a stroke like one two same you can see some of those shapes I might probably should make a brush tip shape that's shaped like a parallelogram Color picking a couple areas is a little bright. There we go. Now I can come up here, maybe do some vertical. You can kind of see it kind of sort of comes across. But I notice here he's not really using the texture so much, so I might just turn it off for a second and do some of these shapes without the brush, the texture turned on. So I'm doing a lot of tapping on my bracket keys. I'll tap right bracket to make my brush a little bigger, left bracket to make my brush a little smaller. And there's another, so I'm kind of noticing to get this effect of grass, it's almost like doing a light and a dark, almost these different size stripes with vertical breakup. It's gonna create some nice layers. 
I need to come all the way out to about here. So we're starting to get some of that grass break up. And notice my values on my ground plane are definitely too light. So I'm going to want to go darker. Um, I tend, tend to find going darker and then coming up in value is going to be uh, easier. I also might want to start with some... Oops, wrong. Okay. Slightly larger strokes. begin with and then I can get smaller we go down I'll just kind of help layer in naturally the complexity of the brushwork so this guy these guys can just be some nice big blocking and then I can get smaller so kind of go macro to micro macro shapes needs a little smaller I also find the temptation is to zoom in a lot on your painting, and that's a it's a mistake uh, to zoom in too much because you seeing things from afar is you well generally I mean that's how people view it they don't view it looking up real close the illusion it needs to work from farther away um, so most of your work. When you work closely, you can then zoom out and you go, oh, that's not looking very good. And you have to go redo it. Um, starting from farther away is going to look great. And then as you zoom in, you'll be like, okay, now I can refine that detail. But I already have a proof of that it's going to work. So I can do some bigger, smaller shapes here in a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to keep with the staying back and a much larger brush. Now here my evaluation is happening by looking at somebody else's painting like, hey, did I, did I accurately do what they did? When you're working on your own composition, the challenge is doubled because not only are you trying to get the right value and the right shapes, but you're designing on the fly too. This isn't always going to be so straightforward depending on how much, how much planning you did with your initial drawing. And so... Um, it's even more imperative to work farther away because every stroke, every few strokes, you have to reevaluate your composition. Did that help it? Did it hurt it? Um, and you can't do that when you're zoomed in. But I will give you one little trick to do while you're working. If you do have to zoom in on something, open up your navigator window. Okay. And unfortunately, the navigator window is not going to respect the the, the um, proof setup we did. But you can still see your painting in a sm sort of a small thumbnail. You can change, usually this is red, but if you go to panel options, you can change your view box to be a dark, different color. So it's not quite, I wish you could just turn it off. But I don't have that yet. And I'll just drag this off on my other monitor or just up here in the corner. And I can always see how my painting is looking um, here uh, from a distance, even if I'm working really close. So this is a nice way to do it. There's another more complicated way of opening up a dual window. Um, but I think this one is uh, sort of the easiest to access. And it doesn't put too much strain on your, on your operating system. On your computer. So I'll move that off to my other side. I'm just kind of keep working large. All right, so I, uh, I'm going to let you guys keep going. Um, I'll keep working and we'll check in later.